All right, so in this video, I would like to walk us through the mechanism for a sample Fischer esterification reaction, this reaction right up here. But first, let's talk about what exactly a Fischer esterification is and the general form that all of them take. Well, if you notice the root ester here, Fischer esterification is simply a method for the preparation of ester compounds. So the form that all of them will take, the general form, is you will have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol reacted in H plus to yield the ester and some water. So let's go through the mechanism for the sample reaction that we have up here. We have some benzoic acid and we also have some CH3OH or some methanol and we will get our H plus from HCl up here which is what we're going to react with and notice this is an equilibrium reaction so that's just important to note. <clears throat> won't matter on the mechanism here as we go through this, but it's just important to note for future reference. So, all right, let's start walking through the mechanism. And I'm drawing benzene like this throughout this mechanism because it is easier. And in fact, I may just end up using phi at some point. So let's start looking at this. Well, the first thing that's going to take place is, you notice we've got our HCl up here. We do not have the... Um, the, uh, ethan, uh, the methanol written up here yet because it has nothing to do with the reaction at this point. It's not going to come into play until the next step. So let's look at the first step of what's going to happen here. The oxygen, these lone pairs on this oxygen here, are going to come and attack the hydrogen atom. And that's going to cause the electrons bonding the hydrogen to the chloride here in HCl to kick on to that, causing the uh, formation of a Cl minus ion. And this is going to result in the following compound. Now that we do this, we're going to add the OH here. I have an OH compound. Well, we can do it over here, can't we? All right. So we'll have our benzene. Now this is OH. And look, three bonds to oxygen. So oxygen now has a positive charge. All right. And then, of course, we have our OH maintained over here that wasn't touched. So what's the next thing that's going to happen now? Well, we've also got our mega Cl minus in solution. Don't forget about that. So we got that. All right, next thing that's going to happen. Well, our methanol is going to come into play now. So as we look at the next step of what's going to take place, let's go ahead and draw in this. Now make these lone pairs on that oxygen a little bit more visible. All right, so we have our methanol. <coughs> What's going to happen here is a two-step process. Because of the charge difference here, the not complete charge difference, but the slight charge difference, the um, uh, partial dipole, the electrons from the oxygen are going to, man, if I could draw, are going to come and attack this carbonyl carbon here. <clears throat> and these, uh, this is, would, of course, cause five bonds to happen to carbon, which is not okay. So we are going to kick these electrons back up onto the OH destroying the pi bond, uh, leaving it with just a sigma bond. And of course, this is going to result in uh, the neutralization of the charge on that atom, so we won't have that. So here's the product that we'll form next. Our benzene remains untouched here. Come up here, we have now, we just have COH, neutral charge, sigma bond only right here. That's all we need to worry about. And of course, this OH is here, but look, what else is formed? Don't forget, we added the methanol to our compound. So we have our entire thing there. All right, so what's going to happen now? Well, we don't forget that we have our Cl- minus still in solution, so I will redraw this guy down here so we can better illustrate what's going on. And the negative charge in that C- minus is going to come into play now. Well, the negative charge is going to be attracted to a certain part of this molecule, and that's going to be this hydrogen down here. But I, look, I forgot to draw in... <coughs> We have a positive charge on this oxygen because we have one, two, three bonds to that oxygen. So there's a positive charge going on there. So what's going to happen? Well, this chlorine is going to take its negative charge and it's going to attack this hydrogen. That's going to kick off these electrons back onto this oxygen, which will be useful in neutralizing the charge of that oxygen. So we will come up with this compound here. which we've got the phenyl connected to, let's see, our central carbon, OH group, 
OH group. We're drawing the electrons on this one for a good reason. And on the bottom here, we now just have CH3O. And of course, in solution, what happened when we did this? We added the H to the Cl, so now we have some HCl in solution. So. All right, so what's going to take place next? Well, we'll draw this out like this. Ugh. All right, what's going to take place next? Well, this HCl is going to... have its hydrogen attacked by the OH. All right, and this is going to lead to another product here. So when the hydrogen has its attack by, has, is attacked by the electrons on the OH, we of course kick this off here again and we're going to get Cl minus. When we do that, now we've made this into water and we made it into water so that it can be a, um, well, once water is formed, Things will look like this. Get the white pen back. All right. Positive charge on the oxygen because it's maintaining three bonds. All right. Put the electrons there. Do we have everything? Yep, looks like we do. <coughs> All right. So, what's going to, well, no, no, we don't. We still, yep, yeah, sorry. We have our CH3O. All right. <clears throat> so, what's going to happen now is we have our plus Cl minus, and we are going to have an intermolecular rearrangement going on here. Let's reform the pi bond here. In, did I say inter, intramolecular rearrangement? Sorry. Slightly tired today. All right, so we will kick some of these electrons back down here under the carbon. Five bonds to carbon, not okay. Let's cause water to leave. Let's kick those electrons there. Now we've got four bonds on the carbon. We've reformed our um, uh, carbonyl. And let's see what this will result in. Well, have our results on the next page. And this should be what we have here. Let's see our benzene, carbonyl, carbonyl, three bonds, car. Yep, all right, this is right. <clears throat> this is this is the step we've ended up with. So let's walk through how this is the same, because I know changing pages is, is annoying. So we have our benzene here, and here we have our benzene, carbonyl, carbon, with the OH and the positive there. We have, look, carbonyl, carbon, because we reform. So this is what we've got. We put that bond there. <coughs> um, and we got rid of water, so we just have this guy left on the other side, and that's what we have, and of course our Cl minus that was left over. So yep, everything is looking good. Looks like we've got all of our ducks in a row here. All right, next step that's going to happen. Well, Cl minus is going to have its charge come and attack this hydrogen here. Let's draw that arrow better. All right, and that's going to cause this to jump onto the oxygen and neutralize that charge there. So we will end up with, and I'm going to go back. I had written this earlier, so I'm going to go back to just using the phi. Um, <clears throat> let's do a smaller arrow. We're going to go back and have this molecule. CH3. Is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. All right, and of course now what do we have? We have HCl in solution, and we also have water in solution from earlier, from this step right here when we had water leave. So it's important because in the beginning we said, look, we have H2O made from every Fischer esterification. All right, so let's see. I think we're at our finished product. I think we're done here. Uh, let's see if this guy matches what we have up front. We have benzene. <coughs> Carbonyl carbon and OCH3. Well, let's go back to the beginning. Well, benzene, carbonyl carbon, OCH3, and of course our water in solution. And look, we do. And look, we also have, look at that, HCl. So this is acid catalyzed in this sense, in this case. So we have everything that will allow us to do this again, to go in the backward direction or what have you. So 
That was the mechanism for a simple fissure esterification. Let's do a quick recap. Let me get rid of all this yellow so I can highlight things as we go. <clears throat> all right. We did a fissure esterification using benzoic acid and methanol in HCl to form our ester over here. And uh, what did things look like? Well, we had HCl go, and, uh, and the H of the HCl was attacked by some of the electrons, the lone pairs on this carbonyl carbon for, from our benzoic acid. That caused us to get a negative Cl in solution, and it gave a positive charge on our carbonyl oxygen by, because of the addition of OH here. So that took place, and next what happened? Well, the methanol came into play, some of the lone pairs from its oxygen, so we had the same thing going on again, lone pairs from oxygen directing what's going on, uh, came in and attacked the carbonyl carbon. <clears throat> that caused the electrons to jump back from that pi bond and uh, ha to neutralize the charge up here and form just a sigma bond. So we just had now carbon uh, sigma bonded to OH here, and we have another sigma bond to OH because this is, this is what we had initially. And we had the addition of methanol here, which caused the oxygen and methanol to have a positive charge because of its three bonds right here. So the Cl- minus came in and did its job by attacking this hydrogen that allowed us to use these electrons to neutralize the charge of oxygen here which we did, and that's just getting messy, so yeah, <clears throat> all right, which we did that, and now we came over, and the next thing that happened was HCl came in again and attacked this oxygen, uh, and uh, no, sorry, so I am sorry, the, uh, the oxygen's uh, lone pairs attacked the H of HCl, that caused Cl minus to be happen in solution, it gave us this guy down here, so we had water, which was allowed to leave when the pi bond was reformed by the lone pairs on the OH here, and uh, that gave us a double bond to an OH on our central carbon. And that proceeded to <clears throat> this guy right here with a positive charge on the oxygen, which Cl-, minus, which we had in solution from this step, came and could attack the hydrogen of this OH, allow us to use, which allowed us to use these electrons to neutralize the charge of our carbonyl, and we ended up with our finished product which I'll draw again, our benzene, carbonyl, and OCH3. So our finished ester, ester here because of our oxygen next to that carbonyl with an R group. All right, and what do we come out with? HCl because it's acid catalyzed here, and H2O, which we said we would in the very beginning. So not a horribly simple mechanism, but not too terribly complex either, just a few steps to remember. So that is a sample Fisher esterification.